Welcome back. I'm excited to have you back here. If you have no clue why I'm welcoming you back, you probably missed section one of this video. Basically, when I made the walkthrough for the mock class letter P, uh, it was pretty lengthy because I got into a lot of detail, so I decided to split it into two parts. So you're currently starting section two, which covers slides eight through 12. So if you prefer, you can pause this video, click the link below and hop on over to section one, or you can watch them in reverse order. That's totally fine. All right, by the way, where are my manners? If you're just joining me, let me introduce myself. My name is Teacher Tina, and I love helping people get hired and become really confident teachers for VIP Kid. Okay, let's get started. Slide eight. Slide eight is called point and read, which is really a little deceptive in my mind, because if you are simply using the screen and using your mouse to point and read, you're probably going to confuse your student because your student cannot see if you're just hovering on the screen. Your student cannot see where your cursor is, okay? So unless you're circling everything or drawing lines, your student will not see what you're doing, okay? That's why I suggest that you use a whiteboard. I know I've gone through so many whiteboards today, but they're really a cheap investment in your classroom. So each of these I got from the Dollar Tree for $1. Even this double-sided one with the handle was a dollar, okay? Anyway, something that I like about using a whiteboard is that it is right next to my mouth, right? It's right next to my mouth. So my student doesn't have to decide whether to look at the slide on the screen or my mouth. Right? The student doesn't have to go back and forth. The student can see them right next to each other, which I love, I love that, okay? Some people like to use magnetic letters. If you're a magnetic letter person, that's totally fine. I do suggest using lowercase or small letters if you have them, just so that it's consistent with what is on the screen, but that's, again, up to you, okay? So I think it's simplest to use a whiteboard. So that's how I'm going to show you, okay? So let me show you in three, two, App, app, app. Good job. Okay. B. B. App. Bap. Good job, Nava. Okay, so what I did here, pretty simple. Um, I went letter sound by letter sound, right? And I blended, and I like to draw lines as I do it. Something to note if you are using props, be sure that you don't cover your face. Especially when you're doing pronunciation, you want your student to be able to see your mouth. So oftentimes I'll tell people, you know, they're worried about not fitting and they're doing this. And I say, just move over a little bit. You want to share the space with your props. You don't have to be in the middle of the screen all the time, okay? So something like this, again, watch the glare. <laughs> you may have to tilt it a little bit to avoid the glare, but you'll go sound by sound, have your student do it. And by the end, you want your student to try the BAP by himself or by herself. Slide nine. So slide nine should not take you more than maybe 15 seconds. It is super short, there's no objective on the slide. It's pretty much a throwaway slide, but you should do at least something small. So, for example, you could just say the words activity time with some kind of prop. So here's an example of things that I've actually seen people do when they've practiced for me, okay? Activity time, woo! High five, okay? Not long, okay? That's an example. Here's another example of things that people have done for the activity time slide. Activity time! Woohoo! Click. One more example for you. Ready? Activity time! Woo! Activity time! Right? I think that's a little over the top. You don't really need your student to say it, but it's up to you what you do on the slide. Like I said, it has no objective. 15 seconds max and move on. Slide 10, the p words slide. So this is the one that has p line, p line, p line, right? And let's read the teacher directions to be sure that we do everything that VIP Kid is asking for. 
Read with me. The teacher directions at the bottom say, teacher teaches the word pen to the student and extends the learning by eliciting answers from the student of other words that start with p. Okay, except pig, panda, and pepper. We've already used those words enough. Okay, and in red it says use target sentence. Noun starts with sound. For example, plum starts with p. Okay, so here is my example. Of course, you can do it however you want. I just know that a lot of my students are visual learners, so I'll show you an example of how to use p -p props. Okay, three, two, one. <gasps> Nava. Good. P -p 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 <gasps> pen. Good. Pen. <gasps> pen. Yes. What sound does pen start with? P. Good. <gasps> pen. Good. Pen starts with p. p. Good job. Good job, Nava. P, 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 p. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Popcorn. Popcorn. Mmm. Popcorn. Good job. Popcorn. Hmm. Popcorn. What sound does popcorn start with? Popcorn starts with p. Yes! Popcorn starts with p. Yes, very good. Nava. P, 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 p. P, p, p. Oh, wow. Pumpkin? Pumpkin. Good, good. P, p. Pumpkin. What sound does Pumpkin start with. Good job, very good. You get a pink cake. Pink. Good. Good job. Okay. So basically what I did on this one was I added a visual to it. You don't have to add a visual to it. If you've already run out of whiteboards and it's just too much, don't worry about it. But what I did was I basically just used a whiteboard and I wrote the letter P. It would have been a good idea to write it in the, um, using a wet erase marker just in case, you know, I, I bumped it or something. For the purpose of this video, I just use a regular dry erase marker, but it's going to bother me that I just erase that part of the P because I am very persnickety. So let me fix that real quick. Okay. And basically what I did was I was showing my student that we're using the P sound, but I need to find words that start with the P sound. So I chose to give two examples, two examples. So the first one, of course, was pen because that's the one that VIP kids specifically asked for. Okay, so I used the pen, okay, and then I made these ahead of time. I made these ahead of time. I just have tape on the back of an index card that I cut. Okay, so I just did that. If I wanted to, I could have circled and underlined like we did earlier. I just chose not to do that because at this point, my student should understand the concept of starts with because we've used it enough. But anyway, basically what I was doing was showing visually what the word is and then using that target sentence. And I progressively made it harder too. If you wanna see it again, go back and watch it again, okay? But I made it a little harder. So I would, le I would lead my student into saying the sentence. And you may have noticed me doing this. If my student is not giving me a full sentence, I can kind of do this like full sentence, right? I'm not saying full sentence, that wouldn't maybe make sense to my student, but I'm listening a longer sentence you can ask for a longer sentence by showing you know 
pen starts. Something like that. Okay, so I gave the example of pen, and then again, I tuck it off, okay? And I'm saying, p, p. So my student knows I'm looking for a p word, okay? And <laughs> I actually bought this uh, specifically for this video, but I'm definitely already using it a lot at my house. <laughs> um, I got this really awesome caramel cheddar corn that um, I'm gonna have to pick up all over the floor from practicing this so many times for you. Anyway. I use popcorn as the next, next example. I chose words that have two syllables. Like I said, I'm kind of persnickety. I wanted to be consistent. So I chose after pen, which was the one that we had to use. I used popcorn, pumpkin. Some other ones that you could use are like pillow. I'm sure you can come up with examples of words that you can use. At the bottom, it does say noun starts with sound. I know some people like to use pink or purple as their words. Um, that might be okay, but for the future, when we start teaching our kids the difference between adjectives and nouns, it might get a little confusing. They probably won't remember. If you choose to use pink and purple, I would suggest having something simple like markers. You pull it out, you know, purple, right? Purple starts with, use your board and have your student do it, okay? So in case you choose to use an adjective like a color. Some other words that you might wanna use are simple words like pear, as in the fruit, plum, that I already said, piano, princess, party, prince, puppy, uh, pony, I could go on and on, pot, pan, you name it. Just choose some words as examples, right? I would suggest, besides pen, having at least one example to show your student, and then you do not have to use the prop that I used, the board, that is totally up to you. And by the way, the reason that I wrote out the words ahead of time is because I have very, I have a very hard time with my handwriting. It's something that not a lot of people know about me until obviously right now, YouTube. Um, but I have struggled with my handwriting for my whole life. Like this took me about a whole minute to write. So I write sometimes in class. I tend to use the chat box. If I'm just teaching simple letters, I will write on a board so that they can see the act of writing letters, but it's not my strong suit. So I like to write things ahead of time. So if you want to do what I did with the board, you can maybe write some examples out and have some tape ready to go so you can slap it on there or you can just use the, use the screen. That's totally fine too. Slide 11. Slide 11 is our penultimate slide. All right, so this is the slide that has the really strange picture on it, <laughs> right, with the panda that's lying. You're not really sure what's going on with the panda. The pig is standing there watching and the peppers are just hanging out on this rock with the panda. Kind of a weird picture, kind of leaves you a lot to talk about, right? So on the bottom in the teacher directions, it states, teacher uses target vocabulary and sentence patterns to have a conversation with the student about the picture. Discuss the pictures to extend learning. And then in red, that means alert, pay attention. It says, encourage student to speak full sentences that are suitable for the student's English level, okay? So here's an example of how I would do this slide. This is slide 11, three, two, Circle the pepper, just one pepper. Hmm, Nava, what color, what color is the pepper? Red, oh, red, good. The pepper is, pepper is red. The pepper is red, very good. Nava, hmm, circle the pig. Pig. Good job. Yes, very good. What? Circle it. What is this? This is a pig. Good job. Good job. Okay. Pig starts with what sound does pig start with? Good job, Nava. You are so clever. You get a pink donut. Pink. Mm -hmm. Pink. 
<laughs> Good job, Nava. Okay, so just to recap, this was slide 11 with the picture, right? So all I wanna do is get my student talking. I want to kind of be assessing my student's knowledge because throughout this class, we've been using the, the sound p, right? So I want to get my student using that even more. You can ask all kinds of questions. You can ask about the colors. I would suggest not asking anything super complicated. Even if your student is a rock star, an example of an inappropriate question to ask would be, what do you think the panda is thinking? You know, don't make it so complicated. <laughs> Keep it simple, but challenge your student to use those full sentences because after all, that's our goal. Slide 12, we finally made it. Slide 12 is the goodbye slide. Now I encourage you not to just say goodbye and fly off the screen because you're excited to be done with your mock class. I encourage you to really wrap up the lesson, okay? And you may run out of time. Your mock class mentor may cut you off before you even get to the goodbye slide. But if you have the time for it, do your best to make it a nice closure for your student, okay? And about pacing, Pacing is important, but that's something that really comes with time, no pun intended. The more that you practice pacing as a VIP Kid teacher, the easier it will get. I'm not saying it's easy, but it will get easier, okay? So that is not the most important thing that VIP Kid mock class mentors are looking for. They are looking for student output, that you're getting your student to use complete sentences and that you're correcting your student output. If your student is mispronouncing, that you're catching those errors and positively correcting, okay? And that you're using those target sentences. These things are very important, more important than pacing at the end of the day, okay? But if you have time for the goodbye slide, uh, try to make it nice. <laughs> okay, here's an example of slide 12, the goodbye slide. Three, two, one. <gasps> Nava? You did a good job today. Oh, look. Oh. Hmm. How many treats did you get? Oh, one, two, five treats. Five treats. Nava. Oh, high five. Yes, very good job. Nava, see you soon. Goodbye. Oh, see you soon, Nava. <laughs> okay, so I just like to bring the panda in at the end because most kids love pandas. <laughs> and it kind of culminates the lesson since we talked about pandas. Okay. So basically, I just want to wrap things up. If you have time, it's always nice to count the rewards. It's not necessary, but it kind of brings nice closure and it kind of boosts the kid's self-esteem at the end because most kids are able to count to five, even at level two, most of the time. If they're learning the letter P, they probably can count to five. Okay, anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this walkthrough. Of course, you have so much freedom with this lesson as long as you're focusing on things like the target sentences and pronunciation using those synthetic phonics you will be fine, okay? So there are lots of different ways that you can teach this lesson, so make it your own. So in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I coach people throughout their VIP Kid journey as my full-time job. So I teach in the mornings and I coach people the rest of the day. You may be thinking, how can you afford to do that, Tina? And it's because I do get a bonus. Once my referrals teach their first class as a hired teacher, I get a bonus. But truly, that bonus is just a bonus to me. The real benefit to me is that I get to be a part I get to be a part of your journey and there is no bigger honor than you wanting to bring me along the journey with you so what do I provide to my referrals basically I provide support okay so if you have questions you can ask me uh, you can send me clips of you teaching and I will offer you feedback and perhaps people's favorite perk that I give them is access to my closed Facebook group. So this Facebook group is closed. It's only for my referrals so that I can be sure that I'm spending the most time helping my referrals since they're committed to me. Um, and anyway, on that Facebook group, I have a really lengthy hiring guide. Okay, so these videos on YouTube are just the tip of the iceberg of what I offer to my referrals. So I have a very lengthy hiring guide. I also have items in the files folder, which other members are welcome to 
add to as well. I monitor that to make sure everything in there is good. Um, but that is truly a community of teachers who are dedicated to your success. It's not just me. I'm in there every single day. I'll often hop on and give quick tips through video, live video. I host frequently asked questions or Q&A sessions every other week. So I'm very, very active in that group. You can also contact me through Messenger or through email. I love helping people on their journey. So you might be thinking, hey, that sounds great, but I think it's too late to add you, Tina. No, it's not. <laughs> as long as you have not yet done your mock class, it's not too late to add me, okay? So here's all that you need to do in order to add me as your referring teacher. And if you already have a referring teacher, I'm sorry, at this point, it's too late to add me on this application, okay? But if you don't yet have somebody as your referring teacher, all you need to do is go up on your VIP kick portal, go to my account, and then your referee, I know that sounds funny, I'm like picturing a zebra. Anyway, my account, your referee, and then you input my code. So my code is K-R-I-S-T-0230. Again, that's K-R-I-S-T-0230. I have that below as well. I, I will repeat those steps in the description below in case you missed anything. After you add me as your referring teacher, I would love if you would send me an email or request to join the Facebook group, and then we can get started. I can start helping you. The sooner that you reach out to me and add me, the sooner I can help you on your journey. And that is such a great honor to me. So thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments below and give me a thumbs up so I know that you liked the video. And again, keep an eye out for that letter X video. Good luck to you. Happy teaching. I guess my cat heard me saying Pepper a lot of times and his name is Pepper and he came running to my classroom <laughs> to check on me. How about it, bud? Can you believe he's 14 years old? Still looks like a little kitty. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.